Yo, what I really do, DC Gang. Welcome back to the channel, my boys, my gangsters. As always, I hope you guys are having a great day out there, gang. She. So with that being said, I got it on me. It's a 44 card deck list. Suelta el perro loco, aka who let my dogs out, bro? <laughs> That's what it means in Spanish, except for the loco part. It means crazy. But either way. It's a 44 card deck list. I'm gonna go over everything that you should know about the deck. Why I'm playing this ratio and why I'm playing certain cards and why I'm not playing certain cards. So before we get into all of that, just a quick reminder to please leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe to the boy. Because I would greatly appreciate it. So, um, also quick shout out to everybody that wished me good luck on my trip. I genuinely appreciate that. So shout out to you guys. But now I'm back. So let's get into it. Two draw and lock birds. That's how we're gonna start off the deck, um, the deck list. Because two uh, draw and lock bird is really good against certain decks. It's not really good against the current meta completely because snake eyes can play under it and all that. But that's not why you're here. That's not why you're using that. You're using draw and lock bird to stop maxi because your own deck, this one, can actually play really well under under uh, draw. You don't add any other cards. You're just popping cards all over the place, so you don't really have to worry about adding. Unless it's with your um, your Lord your Lord of Yama. So it doesn't really matter. So that's why we're playing it at 2. If you want to bump it up to 3, do so. I wouldn't just because we're playing 2 Cold by the Graves. We're playing 3 Ash Blossoms. And we're playing Crosshair Designate. So it's fine not playing it at 3. Then on top of that, we're going to play 3 Maxis itself. Because, you know, regular package, 3 Maxi, 3 Ash, 2 Cold Bites, and 1 Crosshair. It is what it is. So we're playing it at 3. They were playing tour guide from the underworld um this thing is actually really cool that we can play it in the deck because there's many ways to play through hand traps because of this one card combo so for example you're gonna normal summon her activate her effect so you could bring out the rhino which is why you're playing it at one and if she gets hit with valor or infinite impermanence if you have a shavara in the hand you could just pop her so you could dodge an infinite, uh, infinite impermanence and a veiler if you have the uh, Shavara in the hand by popping her. She's still going to special summon the Rhino. You could do your whole combo from there. So this thing is really cool. Also, she can special summon any other one of your level 3 um, unchain monsters. But they'll just their effects will just be negated. But most of the time, you don't care because you're just going to pop them. So she's really good. Then, we're like I said, we're playing one Fiendish uh, Rhino Warrior for the one card combo. Once this thing goes into the graveyard, you can activate its effect to send the Shavara to the graveyard and set a trap down. So, if you have your Arua, you could pop and go from there. Then, we're going to run three Ash Blossom for Ash Blossom reasons. Maybe to um, mo most of the time to stop Maxi. That's mainly it. We don't synchro in this deck, so the fact that she's a tuner doesn't matter. So, then we're going to run. Three on-chain on -chain twins Aruha, which is the best one out of all of them in terms of one-card combos and one-card starters. Because most of the time, it's not a one-card combo, but if you have the prison or any one of your two traps, or even if you have, you know, you could normal summon your Raikea or your Sarama, you could just do your combo from there. Because this thing is going to pop them, it's going to activate their effect to either set down a trap or to special summon another on-chain monster. You could start linking up from there and all the, all the extra shenanigans. Then on top of that, we're going to run, like I said, one right Kea. I was running it at two, but honestly speaking, you don't need more than one. Generally, you rarely ever even use it, depending on how you're playing the game, right? So play this at one. I think it's fine at one. You don't need, you don't need it at two. Then we're going to run one Sarama. Sarama is actually extremely good. If anything, play her at, at, at two. If you're going to play both of them, play her at two because... Let's say you did your whole shenanigans, your board got broken, but, you know, you're in a standstill. You could just normal summon her, activate her effect, get a trap on the field, pop her, and do your combo from there. So, I think she should be played at 2 instead of playing Raikea at 2, but that's just my opinion. Um, then, on top of that, we're going to play 3 Unchained Souls of Savara. This thing is nuts. Again, it's going to allow you to dodge effects by popping your own card sometimes. If you're sent to the graveyard, it's going to set a trap in the back row. So, it's, it's really good. I hope Konami does not start limiting this. Because Unchained is not prevalent enough in this game right now, in my opinion, that it, it needs to get hit with anything. The deck is good. It's a little nuts when you can pop off, but it's not insane or anything crazy. So I think I don't think this deck should get hit, at least not right now. At least let us enjoy it. So this thing being at 3 is really cool. Then we're going to run one Unchained Store of Shyama, which is you could you, you only need one copy too if you want to bump it up to two you can i don't see why you would 
Uh, most of the time, you don't even want to draw it. You want to use it for your combo. And it can special summon itself from the graveyard by popping a card, which is really cool. You could pop your own back row to special summon monsters. You could pop your back row and then pop a spell or, or trap on the field. This thing is actually really amazing. I really like it. Artwork for this deck is also top tier. So then on top of that, we got the Abominable Unchained Souls. This thing is a level 8. Once a card is popped on the field, you can special summon it, get rid of a card in your hand, pop another card on the field. A lot of the time you could do this, you could just bring him out, get rid of a card in your hand to have an extra pop if you need that. Sometimes if you want to search it out and have it in the hand, you could do that. So that way when you pop a card on the field, he's going to special summon himself, get rid of a card, and pop another card. That's double pop. So really good, I like it, and also it's a 3,000 body beast, beast thing. This thing is nuts. So then we're running one Nibiru the Primal Beam because Nibiru again, if you're gonna play Maxi, you might as well play Nibiru. So that way you have something special to draw into instead of the other hand traps. That way you can wipe out the board if you can, if your opponent hasn't set up a Baron the Floor or something like that yet. So I play it at one. Then we're gonna play one DDD Vince uh, Rikium because of the DDD cards that we're playing, which we're gonna get into in a second. Then we're gonna play three Abominable Prison. This thing is nuts. Really happy that we got this as support because you could pop this special summon the monster on the field or you could activate this effect and search one of your own chain cards, which could be a trap or a monster, which is really cool. So we run that thing at three for short. We're running one super tactic talent and mainly because this thing is actually insanely good in the game right now. Triple Tactic Talent is, it, to me, is super freaking annoying, so we're gonna play it. Because it's like you activate something, your opponent is either looking at your hand, taking over your monster, or you're drawing two cards. Three effects. Insanity. Which is why we're playing two Triple Tactic Trust, which also I'm gonna tell you why we're playing two copies of this. This thing is nuts in this deck. It's really good. I really like it. I think it's a really good card to have. Um, because, look at this. Normal trap, normal trap, normal trap, normal trap, normal trap. So if you have to, your opponent activated something in the draw phase, whatever, you could activate Triple Tactic Trust, set down a trap, and if you have any one of your cards that can pop a card on the field, you could start your combo off of just the thrust, which is really good. Also, going second, you search out your Triple Tactic Talent. Also, something that I've done is activate its effect, and then search out my evenly match, set it on the field, go to battle phase, clear the board, which is mainly why I decided to play it, so I could play evenly match, because evenly match is disgusting it's just <laughs> it really matches crazy so that's why we're playing that thing at two then we're playing three dark contracts with the gate now there is one card that i'm not playing so i'm gonna show you is the willing of the unchained souls now i'm not playing it because it's bad or anything i just didn't want to play it i was testing the deck out like this i was doing really good like this so i just didn't want to but you should definitely i think I'm, i might add it in there i might take out one of the dark contracts to add it in there because it's really good because every time you link summon into well not every time it's just when you link summon into one of your chain monsters it's an extra pop if you pop this you could special summon an on chain monster so it has a lot of recursions and it's also continuous so i'm thinking about actually adding it in there and i think it, it will make the deck better but i just want to let you know that i wasn't using it so then on top of that, we're going to play two Call by the Grave for Call by the Grave reasons. Oh, by the way, with Dark Contra, most of the time, you're going to activate it. Search out your, uh, where is it at? The DD Vince King, and you could make a, a Divisor King deal. So a lot of the time, you could use this to pop a card on the field and do your combo that way, depending on what you draw into. So it's really good, right? Then, like I said, to cover the grave to stop Max C, one cross are designated for cross are designated reasons because we're playing a bunch of hand traps. You have to play that thing. Evenly match, which also a good thing that we're playing this because evenly match will destroy us. I think in one of the replays, I don't know if I saved it or not, if it's one of the ones that you're going to see. I actually got evenly matched and managed to play through it. Then we're going to play two infinite permanence because infinite permanence is also really good. Then we're going to play three escape of the own chains and two uh, abomination chambers of the own chain. This one special summons one of your own chains from the graveyard. This one pops a card on the field and then if it gets popped, special summons. Um, the ratio between these two is up to you. You could play this one at three and this one at two. I don't think it matters much, honestly speaking. So again, it's up to you. So then we're going to play one DD Stone King Dearest because again, the DDD cards, you could use two level threes to go into this. And after you use two level threes, you go into your Kaiser. And after you go into your Kaiser, you could slap something on the field, make your suits that way if you want to. Um, a lot of different things that you could do, which is why we're also playing DDD Wave High King Caesar, which you could have two of these on the field. I don't know if you guys knew this. Um, uh, and the first replay, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how to do that stuff. So this thing is actually really crazy, and the fact that you can have two of them on the field is wild. Four special summon the gates, disgusting. 
then we're gonna play one divine arsenal aka double lesus um, because again you're playing some exceeds monsters you can make suits a lot of the time it's a little difficult sometimes to do it because you can't lock yourself into fiends which is one of the downsides of this deck this deck would be insanely good this deck would be broken if it didn't lock into fiend monster because there's so many things that you could do with the deck if it wasn't for that reason so be careful with that if you lock yourself into fiends you can't go into suits remember that because i lost a really important game because of that then again, we're gonna play the Kaiser King, um, deals Mechanex. So again, for the same reason for Zeus and DDD monsters. Then we're gonna play two Unchained Souls of Rage. You don't need more than two, so two is fine. Again, just to use it to uh, link off using one of your opponent's monsters on the field. One special summon monster specifically. Then we're gonna play one more Breaker from the Underworld. She's really good to you know recycle your monsters from the graveyard. Um, she can allow you to OTK a lot of the time as well. I really like this card. They were playing two Unchained Souls of the Yam, y Yams, <laughs> Yama, which is really good at two. I don't think you need to play it more than two. She's, every time you special summon it, she's going to basically search you out an Unchained Monster. That's pretty much it. If, it popped on the, if one of your Unchained Monsters gets popped on the field, you can activate its effect, banish and special summon an Unchained from your graveyard, which is really good too. Then we're going to play one Nightmare Unicorn because it's a fiend. Um, you could go into Unicorn with this thing and bounce a card back to the deck, which is really nice. Then we're going to play one Troll um, Unchained Souls of Anguish. A lot of the time, during your turn, you could use this to link off as well. Not during your opponent's turn. The blue one can do that, the red one doesn't. That's why we play this one at 1. And also, sometimes, if you wanna, if you still have this and you want to use this to link off into the Anguish, you still can pop the Anguish. Anguish is going to activate, recycle a card for you, and then you get to pop a card, right? Which is really nice. Then we're playing the Nightmare Griffin for the Nightmare Griffin lock, which I'm going to show you probably in the last replay. Because I don't necessarily think this is all that good. Especially against Snake Eyes. I got bodied by Snake Eyes because I had... Because Snake Eyes, once you normal summon Ash, all you have to do is just set things that you could send to the graveyard and everything else will activate in the grave. It's, it's not that great. The Griffin Lock is, is not that great in my opinion. But either way, we're still going to play it. We're playing the Unchained Abomination. You only need one. Um, You can bump it up to two if you want to just so you can have more craziness. But one is fine. And then Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. That is the whole deck list. I got some saucy replays for you guys. Enough with the yapping. Let's get into it. All right, Familia. Here we are for replay number uno, number one of the day. Now, this isn't a duel. Just quick warning. It's mainly me making a complete crazy board. And my opponent was not having none of it. Especially because at the end, I used Maxi. So, <laughs> this is more of a showcase. Because I want to show you everything the deck does. And how to go into double high king Caesar. So we're gonna start off with the um, tour guide, activate her effect, special summon the Fiendish Rhino. With the tour guide and the Rhino, we're gonna go into our Yama, link it off. Activate the Yama's effect so we could search out another Unchained Monster, get ourselves the Rhino. So we could activate the effect, send the Shavara to the graveyard, get ourselves the Aruha to the hand, activate the Shavara, set the escape of Unchained in the back row, activate the Aruha, pop the escape. Escape is going to activate, Special Summon Sarama, activate Sarama, set down the escape again, pop the Aruha, activate the Aruha, Special Summon the Sham Shayama. With the Shayama and your Yama, you're going to link off into your Unchained Souls of Rage, because you're angry now. Activate your Shama, pop the Sarama, Shama going to Special Summon itself, Sarama going to activate, and then you can activate your uh, Yama again. Now, most of the time, you want to save that. For when you pop your source of rage so you can activate it especially summon the source of rage again but this is how you go into the double king caesar so the yama is going to activate special summon your shavara from the graveyard then your sarama going to activate special summon your other shavara from the deck and you have to have another shavara in the hand for this to work because now you're going to use two level six right here to go into your high well high king caesar here I'm going to activate Mother Shavara popping. Now I could have set down the Imperm as well. I could have definitely set down the Imperm and popped it. I could have any other spell or trap that you would have had in the hand. You could have set it down and pop it if you want to save the escape. But I, again, I didn't want to pop the Imperm. I'd rather keep it. So I popped the escape again with my Shavara. And with both Shavaras, we're going to go into High King Caesar again. 
Now this board is already insane on its own. You got quadruple special summon negate, and then you could use one of your monsters, your opponent's special summon monsters as link material. We have an infinite impairment in the hand with an ash blossom and a maxi, but I wanted to show you more. So we're gonna use one of the high king Caesars to go into the king mechanex. I'm probably saying that wrong. Send down my trap and end my turn. Now this is still crazy. And I was just showing you again, a different board because this thing has a quick effect once your opponent activates a monster effect you could take over that monster which is really good against kick Kalos. that's mainly why i made it because i've been playing against a lot of tier limits i wanted to show you the full craziness that you could do which is again quick effects like a monster on the field when it activates its effect double special summon the gate use one of your monsters basically falling over alvas for link monsters infinite impermanence ash blossom and maxi what are we really talking about so after that, I'm gonna speed it up because I threw out the maxi and he was just like, nah, we're not, we're not doing that. So that is the craziest board. That is how you go into the Double King Caesar. I just wanted to show it to you guys. So with that being said, let's go into the actual dueling. Let's get into that. Oh, right game. Here we are for replay numero dos, number two of the day. And this one we're going first against Snake Eyes, Rescue Ace, Rescue Ace, Snake Eyes, whatever you want to call it. So here we're going to set down the Abomination so we can activate the Aruha, pop the Abomination, activate the Abomination. To special summon the Shavara. With Shavara and Aruha, we're going to go into Ayama. We're going to activate Ayama's effect, activate the Shavara. That way we could set down the Escape, I believe. Yeah, so we could set down our escape. With the Yama, we're gonna search out our Raikea. We're gonna normal summon Raikea, activate Raikea, pop the escape. And they're gonna activate the Rescue Ace Impulse. Alright, no problem. So here they're gonna special summon a Rescue Ace Fire Engine. Escape is gonna activate to special summon Sarama. Um, Fire Engine is going to activate to special summon an Airlifter onto the field. Airlifter is gonna activate to get themselves the Rescue Ace HQ. My boy is searching and setting up boards during my turn. <laughs> so I'm gonna activate, we're gonna set the escape so we can pop the right care, activate right care, special summon the um, Yama. I mean the Sharama. With the Sharama and the Yama, we're gonna link off into the Souls of Rage. And here I had a plan. So we're gonna activate the Shayama, pop the Sarama, special summon Shayama, activate Sarama, and then I'm gonna activate our Yama in the graveyard. You're gonna see why. So with the Yama, we're going to special summon our Ruha from the graveyard. And then with Sharama, we're going to special summon another Shavara onto the field. With our two level six, we're going to go into our High Wave King Caesar. And then with our uh, Souls of Rage and our Ruha, we're going to link them off into the Souls of the Anguish. Now, if you're wondering why I'm doing this, this thing is beefy. It has 25 attack. It can definitely just attack over my on my rage right here. So I don't want them just attacking over my stuff and then setting up a board where I can't really do much. So I decided to get rid of this thing because the least monster they have on the field, the better for me. Because I already assumed they were playing Snake Eyes. It's just everything is Snake Eyes nowadays, so it's fine. So here we're going to activate the Unchained Source of Anguish. And we're going to use the Fire Engine to go into our Muck Raker. Activate her effect, get rid of a card so we could special summon the Souls of Rage onto the field, set down the evenly match and end our turn. So here they activate the bonfire, getting themselves the uh, Snake Eyes Poplar. They're gonna activate the Popular's effect. <laughs> Popular. We're gonna activate Draw and Logboy immediately so that way they don't get to add cards to the hand. So they special summon the Popular, they can't search out no spells with that thing right now. They're gonna use both of these monsters to go into IP. Mascarenita. They're gonna activate the Poplar's effect to set it in the back row. Then they're gonna activate the Turbulence, banish into monsters so they can special summon it. Of course, I'm gonna activate my King immediately. Activate that thing's effect, pop the Turbulence, because what else are you supposed to do after that? You gotta play Snake Eyes. If you have anything. So here we're gonna activate Shavara. They're gonna activate Cobra the Grave on my Shavara, which is unfortunate. You don't really want that to happen to you, but it is what it is. We could definitely play without it. Go by the grave, that thing. Give it the finger. Get it out of here. Then they're going to activate that Rescue Ace HQ. Normal summoning a Maxi. <laughs> so he normal summons a Maxi and sets down a back row. When your opponent is normal summoning Maxis or Ash Blossoms, 
you know they're desperate. Now here, no, 100%, they're going to try and link off into a link 3 and make plays. That way, we're not having any of that. I'm going to activate my Unchained Souls of Rage. And I'm going to basically use their ma Mascarena to link off with it. And it was GG's. We could have still popped the card on the field as well if we would have wanted to. They ain't have no more follow-up after that. So, <laughs> with that being said, let's go into the oh, next replay. Right again, here we are for replay number three. Number three. Technically, it's number two. And we're going second against Makenko. So here they're going to activate the preparations of right, searching out the Ohime. Ohime is going to activate, searching out the ceremony because they're trying to celebrate. So here they're going to send the Huli to the graveyard. Activate the ceremony so they can special summon the Ohime. Then they're going to activate the ceremony in the graveyard, banishing itself so they can send the Makenko Dance to the graveyard. Activate the Makenko Dance, special summon the Huli onto the field. Set the dance in the back row. Huli's going to activate, getting the rivalry because they're trying to rival me. And that is, that is the board. Now, it's not a crazy board, but you have to see how we play through the shenanigans because they also have a hand trap, right? So here we join to the Shavara, we're going to set down the um, escape so we could pop it, they're going to hit us with the max C. Luckily for us, we had the call by the grave on us. Luckily. So we're going to dial them numbers, dial them digits, call that thing, get it out of here, nos vemos mañana. Shavara again is going to pop the escape. Escape is going to activate in the graveyard so we could special summon our on Abominal Unchained Souls. Now, if you're wondering why I did this, is because I have to bait out the rivalry. It's public knowledge that that's what it is, right? So we have to bait that thing now before they actually get to negate something that is important. So we're going to send the Shavara to the graveyard since we don't need it from the hand anymore. Again, they're going to activate the rivalry, attaching the Axel Fools to this thing, which I had. they probably knew that I was going to use that thing to link off. So here we're going to activate the Shavara's effect, setting down the chambers in the back row, Activating the triple tactics trust that way we could get the talent activate my talent because I'm talented Get the Hulu on my side of the field and then we're gonna use both of these monsters to link off into the Yama Here we're gonna activate the Yama's effect they activate the Makenko rivalry and then they activate the Ohime Which is exactly what I expected them to do now. I don't know why he activated rivalry if he was going to activate Ohime anyways <laughs> But this is exactly what I expected them to do. Because he has to negate my Yama, right? I'm going to search out another uh, on-chain monster. He doesn't know what I have in the hand. So the Yama gets negated. So I'm going to use the Yama and the Huli to link off into our on-chain souls of anguish. Activate his effect so we could use the Ohime to link off into the on-chain abomination. And here it is. Rock Dwayne Johnson, make your appearance. Get out here, bro. Special summons itself. They get rid of our on-chain abomination. We get a token. You're probably wondering, we're done here. It is what it is. You see this number one right here? We haven't even normal summoned yet. We're going to normal summon the Rikea. Activate its effect. Pop the chambers. Activate the Yama. Yama and the um, chambers going to activate. We're going to use the chambers to special summon. This Arama. Yama is gonna special summon an on-chain abomination that he got rid of with the Nibiru. We're gonna pop the Rikea. That's gonna allow me to use the on-chain abomination to pop the Nibiru. We're gonna activate Rikea's effect to special summon another on-chain monster. Get the rock out of here. We're gonna activate the Sama. Sit in the chambers in the back so we can pop the Ruha. Activate a Ruha. Special summon the Shayama with the Shiyama and the token that he gave us. We're going to link off into the Souls of Rage because now you're angry. Activate the Shama, pop the Sarama. Sarama is going to activate, special summon another Ruha, and that is 8300 life to the face. Two negates and Nibiru like it was nothing. Like it was nothing. Now, we legitimately had to set that up, though, because if I wouldn't have set that trap and if I would have normal summoned, this would have been a whole different game. But that's why I was playing the way I was playing, because his field was glowing after my fifth normal summon. I, mean, I mean, after my fifth special summon. So I had a feeling it had to be Nibiru, right? So with that being said, let's go into the next replay. All right, Familia, here we are for replay number four, three. I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> We're going second against Snake Eyes. They activate the Wanted because they want that W. Of course, I'm not going to ash that thing. 
They're gonna activate. Well, they're gonna set down the divine temple of. Where did the poplar just? Oh, so they activate the divine temple so they could set poplar in the back row so they could get rid of it with the avatar such a special summon it. I was like, where that thing come from? Either way, they're gonna activate the avatar, activate the poplar. Poplar is gonna set itself in the back row. I'm gonna use infinite impermanence in the Diablo star because the way you're playing, the way you're doing things, is letting me know you don't have the spoils right now. So I have to negate the Diablo star with the infinite impermanence. Poplar comes to the back row. Get that thing out of here. They set one back row and then they turn, right? Now, unfortunately for us, I'm bricked up, bro. I have the wall of China in my hands right now. So I can't really do much of anything. Even if I wanted to, so I'm gonna set down the escape. End our turn, pass it on to them. Here they're gonna activate the Abusar again, getting rid of their Nibiru so they can special summon it, activating its effect, setting down the ori original sinful spoils, activating the spoils, setting the Abusar to the graveyard, and of course, I'm feeling joyous. Negate that thing. Get it out of here. So now they can not activate another one because we use Ash on it. They're gonna activate the Wanted, of course, to recycle the spoils so they could draw a card. They're gonna set down another back row, slap me in the face with the 2500. We're really just controlling them right now with hand traps. So here we're gonna join to the dark contract, activate the dark contract effect, activate it again. They're gonna hit the thing with an ash blast, so he knows that I'm bricked up. He knows. So what am I gonna do? Show him that I'm talented. We're gonna activate the triple tactics talent because they use ash blossom. We're gonna go for the draw. Here we're gonna join to our Rikea and uh and our chambers. Amazing draw by the way. We're gonna normal summon the Rikea, which is gonna trigger their field spell. We're gonna activate the Max Seed because they're gonna special summon the Poplar. We only get one card off of this if I'm not mistaken. Special summon the Poplar, we're gonna join to our, our prison. They're gonna search search out the sinful spoils because he thinks he's gonna survive. We're gonna activate the escape so we could pop the back row. I don't know what that is. They're gonna activate the infinite impermanence. And I try to be slick and see if this was another infinite impermanence or something like that. So I activated the right care to pop our trap. Now, this doesn't actually activate our trap because it has to be set. If this set card is destroyed by card effect, it's not set anymore. It's being activated. So we're going to pop it just to try and bait out some other shenanigans. Get it out of here. Again, our Rikea gets popped either way, so we're gonna activate its effect, special summon the Shavara. Then I'm gonna activate the prison, getting myself the Aruha to the hand. We're gonna set down our um, chambers, activate the Aruha, pop the chamber so we can special summon Aruha, activate chambers, special summon our Shay Shayama, activate Shayama's effect. We're gonna pop our back row, the contract, so we could pop the other back row, which was forbidden droplet. <laughs> So here we're gonna use our Shavara and our Yama to go into our, well, Ashayama and Shavara to go into our Yama. Activate Yama, activate Shavara. Shavara is gonna activate so we can set down the escape in the back row. Yama is gonna activate so we can get our Shavara, which we haven't activated its effect from the hand. So we're gonna pop the Aruha, special summon our Shavara. Aruha is gonna activate, we're gonna special summon the Sa Saraha, activating our Saraha. Our Sarama, so we could pop the Sarama. They just sound alike, so I'm confusing sometimes. But we're gonna activate Sarama's effect, special summon our Abominable on Chain, activate its effect, get rid of the Nibiru, so we could pop the Poplar, get it out of here. It's gonna set itself in the back row, we don't care though. So then we're gonna link off into our on chain Souls of Anguish, activate our Souls of Anguish. So we could use A and the other star to link off into our on-chain abomination. Now I won't lie to you, this is exactly lethal damage, but I completely forgot about the Star second effect because the duel was actually pretty long. So they activate that thing's effect, send the Pablo to the graveyard to special summon the Star. I completely miscalculated on that part. So they activate its effect, setting down the spoils in the back row. We're going to pop the Avastar, get it out of here. That's going to activate our own chain abomination. So we're going to pop the Divine Temple. Get that thing out of here. Slap him with a 3,000. Slap him with a 2,000. We're going to go and link off both of these into the Muckraker, which mistake number two. Again, this dude was actually really long. And I could have sworn that we had a rage in the graveyard. And you could tell that it was an honest mistake because I could have just used both of these to go into rage. But again, I thought that I had it in the graveyard. I didn't check. I activate Mugbreaker, get rid of our prison, special summon Ayama, 
because again I thought I was gonna be able to special summon my Souls of Rage so I ended up doing that mistake on me is the end phase we still get to pop the spoil so we don't really care much here they're gonna join to another card they activate the uh, subversion, setting my abomination in the back row, activating the original sinful spoils, so they can recycle a card to search out the ash. They're gonna normal summon the ash, activate the ash's effect, getting themselves the poplar to the hand. They activate poplar, special summon it onto the field, link it off into the link Karibo. Now, if you're wondering why he's not, he didn't use poplar's effect to search, I think. Yeah, they have one spoil here and one wanted. And then they have Subversion already in the graveyard. They don't have anything else to search with Poplar. So they're going to activate this effect. They're going to set it in the back row. So here, I'm going to activate our escape to pop our Yama and pop their Ash. Because if I let him bring the Poplar to the field, then he's going to be able to combo off. But if this thing is sent on the field, it can activate to send itself to the graveyard and bring the uh, Flame Bird onto the field. So we're gonna pop the Yama, pop the Ash, get it out of here. They set the pop line in the back and they can't do anything else. So here we're gonna join to Cross Out Designated. I'm gonna activate my Buck Breaker. We're gonna get rid of the uh, Cross Out Designated so we could special summon our Souls of Anguish. Activate Souls of Anguish so we could use it and Link Karibo to link off into our Souls of Rage. Which is what I thought we had in the graveyard before. Then we're gonna use both of these monsters to go into our Yama. We're going to activate Yama's effect, getting ourselves the Aruha, activate Aruha, pop our bump on Chain Abomination that's going to trigger Yama in the graveyard, special summon our own Chain Abomination back onto the field, and it's GG's. I'm going to unchain my boys from the back row, bro. Every time. Put them back there. I'm going to unchain them every time by popping them. <laughs> that's really cool, bro. So with that being said, let's go into the next replay. Alright, Familia, here we are for replay number 4, number 4 of the day. We're going second against Labyrinth with no Ash. No Ash. They're going to activate Ariana, getting us up to be welcome to the hand. They're going to set 3 back row and end their turn, right? Now, luckily for us, apparently they didn't have the clock. They're going to activate the big welcome, special summoning the lady. So here I'm going to normal summon my Rakea and set down the escape. Now, again, I did this specifically because I knew they would trigger their own welcome. And if they decide to pop a card on the field or in my hand, I don't have any problems with that. So they're going to activate the lady, setting down a back row, activating the welcome. They're going to set the destructive Durama in the back row. Setting down a clock, getting the clock back to the hand, which is insanity, right? Now they're going to activate Ariana, activating the uh, Labyrinth Cool Clock. And luckily for us... Luckily, bro, I had the call by the grave because without call by the grave, this would have been a completely different game. I believe we could still play through it by popping cards even if they're face down. Because what they're trying to do is activate the destructive Daruma cannon, right? So we're not allowing that. They're not destructing cannoning anything. Get the clock out of here. It's about that time. Nos vemos mañana. Ariana's gonna draw a card. They're gonna special summon the lovely onto the field. Again, they can't pop anything because nothing was sent to the to the hand. So we're going to activate the Rikea. Popping our escape, they're going to hit us with infinite impermanence. Like you're probably wondering, why would you put this here in front of the back row and all of that? If infinite, It doesn't matter, bro. It's my turn. I can't even activate this. I just needed there to be popped. So he's going to negate our Rikea. Now I'm going to activate my Sharvara. Popping our escape. Escape is going to activate. Special summon our abominable on chain. We're gonna send the Shayama to the graveyard because we don't need it in the hand. And that way we're gonna pop the lovely. Then with our Hikea and our Shavara, we're gonna go into our Yama. Yama is gonna activate. Shavara is gonna activate so we can set a trap in the back row. So here we're gonna set the chambers in the back row, activate our Yama to get our Ruha. Then we're gonna activate our Shayama. Pop in our back row to special summon the Sayama. Activate our chambers to special summon the Sarama. I'm going to activate the Sarama to pop the... The Sayama to pop the Sarama so we could pop the back row, which is the Daruma Cannon. Get that thing out of here. Activating the Sarama so we could special summon the another copy of the Shavara. And then we're going to activate my talent because I'm talented so I could take over your lady. 
And then with both of these monsters, we're gonna have two level six. We're gonna go into our DDD King Caesar. They're gonna activate that Mr. Manaho, which is I didn't know exactly what they had in the hand. But I'm like, I don't know why the fuel keeps glowing. So that's why I went into our hiking Caesar, which I'm glad we did. It didn't really matter much. But we activate this effect because they activate the Magna Hut. Negate that thing special summon. Pop it and get it out of here. No vemo. And we have more than lethal damage to slap him in the face. So they're just going to spoof. Without Ash. Now again, luckily it was the call by the grave for MVP because this would have been a completely different game. It depends on when they would have activated the Daruma because I did have Shavara in the hand. So if I start linking off and they use that, I can still pop cards and, you know, still do some shenanigans under that. But it would have been depending on what or when they activated it. So with that being said, let's go into the next replay. All right, gang, here we are for probably the last replay of the day. I'm going to show you just the, the Cypher lock after this. So we're going to start with a tour guy. We're playing against Snake Eyes. Again, they're going to hit us with an Ash Blossom. Now, because of the hand that I have, I actually have to cross out Destinate that thing. Because um, this can't do anything. I can't search out for a monster pop this. I'm just going to have a monster on the field. I already normal summon. So unfortunately, I have to cross it out. Get it out of here. So Ash Blossom gets negated by banishing our own Ash Blossom. Our tour guy gets to pop off. So we're going to special summon the Fiendish Rhino. And with both of these monsters, we're going to link off into the Yama. We're going to activate Yama's effect. Activating the Rhino. We could speed this up a little bit. Send the Shavara, get us out the Aruha, set down the trap in the back row. We're gonna pop the back row with the Aruha. Back row gonna activate to special summon the Sarama. Sarama gonna activate, set the escape so we could pop the Shavara. Shavara is gonna activate to special summon the Shayama. Shayama and the Yama go into the rage. Activate Shayama, pop the Sarama. Sarama gonna activate special summon our Abominable on chain. Now, why did I do this here? Oh, oh, they have a Nibiru. <laughs> They have a Nibiru, I remember now. They have a freaking Rock to Wayne Johnson. So I was trying to play around it because I had a plan. You're going to see. So here I'm going to activate our prison. By getting our prison, I get my um, chambers to the back row. We're going to activate my own chain Shayama to pop my Abominable on chain. What? Get it out of here. And they're going to activate the Nibiru, right? There it is. How did I know they had Nibiru? Because of the prompt, bro. You always gotta have your prompt on. Toggle on, toggle off. It's gonna show you how you what your opponent has. So here they're gonna give us a token. Is the end phase. If you're wondering why I activated Shayama to pop this thing. Now, I did toggle off in the end phase by mistake. So, I don't know if this would have happened or not. But, this thing says, if this card in the is in the graveyard because it was destroyed... On the field and send it this turn, you could special summon this card, but place it at the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. So my plan was that during my end phase now, because of this effect, I was going to special summon this thing onto the field. Now I have a pop-up card on the field and I can special summon something with my chambers, which I would have special summon my, my rage, right? So I would have had more disruption. Now, unfortunately, I did toggle off, so I don't know if it works, but it should. Either way, they activate the wanted, getting the associate adversary to the hand. Here I'm going to activate Max C, throw that thing out there, they have the call by the grave for it, unfortunately. It is what it is though, I'm going to activate my chambers, that way I can special summon my rage, because I'm angry now. Bring it out here. Again, Max C gets body and negated. Here they're go we're going to go into the main phase, they activate the original sinful spoils, getting rid of Nibiru, I'm going to ash that thing, get it out of here. You're spoiling nothing. Negate that. So here they're going to activate the Wanted so they can recycle the spoil so they can draw a card. They're going to normal summon an Oak. Link off the Oak into an Anima. Anima is not going to get to activate to take my token because I'm going to use it to link off with a Rage. And he's just going to scoop. So that's why I started the, the combo of the way I started it and why I brought the Abominable Unchained Soul. Because I, 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 I wish I didn't toggle off. I forgot why I toggle off, but I'm pretty sure that should work that way. We popped it. It was popping sent to the graveyard, doing our turn, and it's an end turn. Now, again, like I said, we, we won't know. But with that being said, let's go into the next and last replay of the day. And here we are for the last replay of the day. And this is more of also a showcase of me showing you the, the Griffin Lock. 
So here we're gonna activate our prison, getting ourselves the Shavara to the hand, because we have another prison and a trap. We're gonna set the chambers, pop the chambers with Shavara, activate chambers, special summon Raikea with Raikea and our Shavara. We're gonna go into our Yama, activate the Yama's effect, activate Shavara. Shavara is gonna, of course, set the trap in the back row. We're gonna get our Aruha to the hand, activate Aruha, pop the escape. Escape is gonna activate. Special summon Sarama, activate Sarama, set the chambers, pop the Ashura, Aruha. Special summon the Shayama, with Shayama and Yama, we're gonna go into the Rage. Activate Shayama, pop the Sarama, Sarama is gonna activate. Special summon another Shavara. With both of these monsters, instead of going to our King, we're going to Mount Raker. Activate Mark Raker so we can special summon the Yama back onto the field by getting rid of a card. Using Yama and a Rage, we're gonna go into our Griffin. Activate Griffin, set the triple attack to us so we could draw a card and set down our other escape on chain, which is really cool that you could do that. And then we're gonna set infinite impermanence. Now, none all of the special summon monsters on the field cannot activate their effect unless they're linked like this, so none of them. And then we have infinite impermanence, pop a card on the field, and special summon one of our chambers monsters, well chambers, on chain, and ash blossom. So this is the griffin lock. I, I don't think it's that great, honestly speaking, I like the regular board better, they're gonna activate the trap tricks, Merlo, we're gonna infinite impermanence that thing because anything else we probably won't get to infinite impermanence. We're gonna activate the chambers, so we could special summon our rage onto the field. Again, the Merlo gets negated. They're gonna link it off into a Sarah. Now, this is the crazy part. I can activate, well, I can't pop her. She won't be affected by our escape. But the crazy thing is that if any curse on the field that we can pop, I can still pop the Rage and still special summon it by banishing the Yama. It's insane. So here they're gonna activate the um, Aro Compa, whatever that is. We're gonna pop it with the Souls again, activate the Yama. Special summon the Rage back onto the field, even though we activate Rage to get the Shavara back to the hand. Bring the Rage back onto the field, and opponent is gonna scoop. So that is the Griffin Lock, that's why I mainly just wanted to show it to you so you could see it. Now let's go back to the deck list. Alright gang, here we are for the deck list portion of the video once again. Again, it's a 44 card deck list, if you wanna change anything or switch something up, do so. I like it the way it is. The only thing that I would probably do is add the um, this thing right here, the willing of the Unchained Souls. Other than that, I really like the ratio. I really like the play style. This is currently, I think this is one of my favorite decks right now. It's not too crazy. You can kind of play through it. It does a lot, yeah, but it doesn't feel super unfair. It just doesn't. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the content again. Please remember to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. Because I would really appreciate it. Any comment, questions, and concerns in the comment section below. I try to always reply. Continue having a great day. And I'm going to catch you guys next time. Peace.